So continuing our special 500 episode series going over the 10 years that Watch This with Ramos has been on. This is episode 7. We're going, this is a long fucking haul. We're doing this. Last week we ended in 2020 with the pandemic. This week, episode seven, we're gonna jump around. We're still in 2020, but we're gonna we're not going in order because things have gotten crazy. Things have gotten interesting. So fast forward from contagion and outbreak an episode that we did in 2020 through some zombie films that were kind of our response to that. We jumped to episode 299, Oliver Stone's JFK. Why are we jumping to episode 299, Oliver Stone's JFK? All of you know why. Because former President Trump just survived an assassination attempt and shit's gotten crazier and crazier and crazier. I don't pretend to know the future, predict anything. And, you know, for the most part, I'm a, I'm just a guy working a regular job, uh, talking on a podcast about movies that I love. None of this shit should play into it. None, none, I, I shouldn't be talking politics. I shouldn't be getting into, um, the dynamics of the Republican and the Democratic parties, uh, it shouldn't play out on this show. But there is the there is the reality of art imitating life, life imitating art, and both influencing each other in cross streams. So it becomes something that you have to deal with. I don't know. I don't. I don't have any fucking answers, and I think that. Um, any speculations that I have are cynical and uh, um, very much the thing of of a, of a of a tired and pessimistic attitude built on forty nine years of life. JFK as a movie. I think I must have been, a, what, what year was that, 92, 91? Yeah, like 91, 90. 91, okay. So I was, I was about probably um, 16 or 17 years old at that point. I had known about the Kennedy assassination. I had known about uh, the escalation of Vietnam knew a vague idea and this is this is a testament to the political literacy in this country and i think a lot of people are like this i'm not just shitting on myself in this in this manner but um i had heard about the cuban missile crisis still am not entirely sure what that was knowing it was a standoff knowing that it was a it was a it was a political battle between the soviet union and the united states for um uh missiles on on Cuba and uh, um, an invasion that failed spectacularly but there's more to every story the point of what I'm trying to say here I don't know if there is any kind of fucking point is that it's 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 convoluted it's a mess and um, I'm not sure if anybody knows whatever the fuck there it is they're trying to talk about um, but JF, they, they do say that the people who people who fail to study history are doomed to repeat it. That's a an old cliche, but I think it's one that actually is is honest and truthful. Um, whatever the that cliche though leads me to to ask, what the fuck did we not pay attention to that we're living in what we're living now? Is this a Hitler lesson? Is this a JFK lesson? Is this a, a is this a fascism at the time of Franco? What are we What are we looking at? Are we looking at the beginning of the end of 
our country. And did part of that start with the assassination of John F. Kennedy on November 23rd, 1963? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm, I'm just trying to... I'm trying to ride this wave and, and keep my head above water. I've never been this depressed about a political situation in my life. I don't know what I don't know what to think. I don't know how to plan for the future. I don't know what kind of future is a possibility. And I don't know if it's being all blown out of proportion. I don't I don't know. I, I mean, we're to, all just doom scrolling. We're all just what? Doom scrolling. Doom scrolling. <laughs> yeah. You fucking get on the phone and you keep swiping and you look for the craziest, most fucked up, depressing shit. Which is, there's, there, is no, there is no uh, shortage of depressing, well, yeah. dangerous shit on the phone. And maybe that maybe the that al- leads into it, you know? The algorithm of life just keeps fucking uh, showing us more and more reflections back. You know what I mean? Like, um, mm-hmm. that's the fucking abyss that... Uh, that Nietzsche was talking about, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not, but, um, but it might as well be, um, to say that, you know, you stare long enough into this fucking abyss and it stares back. Well, it's staring back at us all. Um, in 2020, we, in, no, in November, in commemoration, we, uh, we did an episode on fucking, uh, Oliver Stone's JFK film, film from the early nineties. Um, and JFK was a moment. It was one of those moments of where were you? Obviously, like many of us listening, were not alive yet. Um, but that's very important, don't you think? That that um, many of us weren't alive. But your generation and my generation. I'm 49. Um, we're in the same generation. We're in the same generation. You're at the you're at the end of the generation. I'm closer to the beginning of that generation. I would I guess. No, you're not. You're born in the seventies. I was born in seventy four. Yeah. So. So you're closer to the middle. Anyway. Anyway, wow. whatever you. Okay. So. So the the point that I'm trying to make is that um, although we weren't there to experience it, we weren't there to see it, we weren't there to be directly affected buy it in the moment it is something that has laid a pall over our entire life um i can't remember a time when i didn't know about this i can't i can't remember a time as a conscious human being of 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 a certain curiosity so i'm talking about probably fifth fifth or sixth grade Mm -hmm. i can't remember a time when i did not know who jfk was and i did not know about the zapruder film Exactly. Yeah. Those brutal film is like, that's the, yeah, that's the Holy grail of fucking like, um, of all of that and all the conspiracies that came out of it and, and, and everything. And, and, and it was like, we had something on film. Yeah. Um, something that pivotal to see the, to see a president of the United States and all that we're told of, you know, the power, the glory of, 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 and the exceptionalism of the United States. Right. And here you have uh, uh, a member of the closest thing that in that in the American mythos was considered like a royalty, other than a, than a, a movie star. It was it was a uh, it was Camelot. Yeah. Um, and to have that person suddenly and dramatically slain and to have it filmed. It's like how fucking 20th century can you get? And it's in the 60s. And to be on film is not to set the record like straight or to make it that much more clear. It's to make it that much more fucking like confusing to actually have the footage because now now it's not only what you're saying; it's like uh, it's what you're what you think you're seeing and how you interpret that. Cyril Wecht, the the uh, the forensic pathologist, one of the guys who's like, you know, this is a 
um, widely critiqued uh, the Warren Commission. Um, he just died this year. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, okay, this is the magic bullet. There's all the stuff surrounding, all the controversy surrounding JFK and the fact that could it have been just one lone gunman? Um, one lone guy in up there in the Texas School Book Depository um, with that Carcano rifle. One guy. And now we fast forward. You know, we didn't, obviously, we didn't know what we were going to talk about. We didn't know, you know, you don't know the future, clearly. Um, but now we're talking about that year. And then we're tying it in because it's like today is, today is Thursday. Last Saturday, a 20 year old got on the roof of a low building. What? was like 150 yards or something like that um, away from former President Trump and fucking almost assassinated him. Um, and the PR instincts kicked in so the guy, guy shoots off however many rounds, kills someone in the crowd, grazes fucking Trump's ear. Snipers take that kid out, 20-year-old, the young man. Um, there's footage of everything. Um, Secret Service tackles Trump. Well, he goes down and they tackle him. You can hear the audio. You can read the transcripts. Um, shooters down, let me get him up, wait, wait, let me get my shoes, let me get my shoes. Um, they huddle, They're, they start to, we gotta get you to the car, they're moving him towards the car, wait, wait, wait. And he fucking sticks his head out, pumps his fist in the air in professional wrestling fashion, throws his fist up like fucking Rocky and mouths the words, fight, fight fight as blood drips down from the top of his right ear onto his cheek towards his lips he looks defiant he looks fucking angry to his supporters he looks heroic to the cameras he looks fucking iconic there's a photo there's a fucking Pulitzer Prize candidate photo that we've all seen by now and now Trump they're selling those fucking shoes um, you know Post-assassination post -assassination attempt uh, scheme, you know. Um, he pumps his fist. The American flag is flying in the background. It's probably going to be on the cover of Time Magazine. It's not already. Um, and people are like, well, what's Time Magazine? You don't even fucking need Time Magazine because we've all seen that picture. It's fucking like emblazoned in the consciousness. It's all over the fucking internet. Um, and everyone's saying, fuck, like this guy just, uh, this guy just won the election. Yeah. Um, Trump lives, the constitution dies, democracy dies. Um, out of that swirl, conspiracies, you know, there's an AP article. The headline is one screen, two movies. Um, I said, how fucking, how pertinent, how relevant for what we're doing. Um, cause I mean, we don't have fucking Cronkite these days. We have TikTok. Well, Cronkite might have killed himself with all of this shit. He might have he might have ate the hemlock with the last eight it, years of it, this shit, you know? It's crazy. It's yeah. fucking cinematic. It's um and and I don't wanna sound um when I speak of it, I'm speaking of it in like this passionate kind of way because I'm looking at it just from the perspective of, and, and conscious of this, that there's like many minds about this in terms of like, uh, I'm of one mind that's like completely cynical about it where it's like, yeah, it's not the fucking, I said, we were talking about this earlier, it's not the fucking resume of the candidate, it's the fucking cover letter, it's the fucking message, the messaging, the optics, 
the personality. Again, professional wrestling. How outrageous. It's it's cult of personality. That's what Trump is. How out fucking outrageous can you be? And people will follow you. Be the strong man. I'm rich. I'm white. I'm a man. I do whatever the fuck I want. You can't stop me. I do whatever the fuck I want. You want to be you, 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 you want to be me. You hate me because you're a fucking hater. I sent you a, uh, a mm, clip. Yeah. I sent you a clip of at that time WWF, but it was WWE as it's known now, and it's fucking Ted DiBiase. And I said, "Fuck!" I found it because I, I, in the aftermath of the of the shooting, I started going to professional wrestling as a kind of like. I was trying to channel some kind of like understanding of the, of the consciousness and I was tapping into that. Um, and I found that clip of Ted DiBiase on the brother love show. So brother love was this, uh, one of these commentators on, on professional wrestling. And he, he, his character was basically like an evangelical preacher. And so, um, and so I, was watching this clip and I sent you and now and now we're in the full on full swing of the fucking Republican National Convention and I'm going like going back to that clip and I'm saying like yeah this fucking makes sense this makes sense to the podcast because it's it's this is like you said it's the reflection art imitates life life imitates art it's it's how do you make sense of it or how do you um, sit there in front of the screen and weep or laugh or do whatever um brother love is basically the evangelical giving ted dibiase the million dollar man this platform and behind ted dibiase is his loyal um african-american manservant valet um uh, virgil <laughs> There ain't no way to there ain't no way to present that without it just being a problem. I mean, the, the it's but it is the, what it is. It's built yeah. on no, it's built on that. Yeah, and and it's done and it's done to create all of that controversy. And it's like fuck. And so the platform of the metaphor, because I was like, this is the fucking metaphor. This is the fucking metaphor. Um. And it's and it, the thing is, it's not the metaphor. It's one of the metaphors because it's like there's so many fucking stacks of like media that you can use to try to come to terms with what's happening. Um, Brother Love is the fucking the Republican Party with its evangelical wing, with its different wings. The you know WWF and Vince McMahon as a or WWE and Vince McMahon as always like. You know, and, that, and Trump has literally been involved in that. Um, you have them giving him this platform and the Virgils of the Republican Party, the the Tim Rice's, the Nikki Haley's, the um, Clarence Thomas's. The list goes on. People who, and they don't have to be um, people of color to be those manservants because the, basically the whole Republican Party is is a mix of Brother Love and Virgil. And more of them are Virgils than Brother Loves because he's humiliated them all and attacked them all and they still bend the knee to bring in some Game of Thrones language. Um, and so... Ted DiBiase is there and he's going to unveil this thing. And what he's going to unveil is his million dollar belt. And he says, the WW, I think at that point it's still the WWF, but whatever. He's referring to the World Wrestling Entertainment Corporation. But at that point it's the federation that is the wrestling promoter, promotion. He's, um, 
he basically describes this huge conspiracy against him and he says, I had the belt. I had the belt and they hated me for it. And I'm super paraphrasing. Obviously, he's better than at it because it's straight from the fucking asshole's mouth, right? Um, with that laugh. Brilliant. The, the, the heel. The, the, a villain that we love to hate and hate to love. Um, and he says, they, I had the belt. They hated me for it. So what did they do? They had to take it from me. They stole it from me. They stole the belt from me. But I'm too good for their fucking belt. I'm too good for it. They couldn't come out and get it. They couldn't take it from me uh, legitimately, so they had to steal it. And I'm going like, oh, Jesus. And so I brought my own fucking belt. And he unveils this million-dollar belt. He's now going to basically crown himself king. He bought his own fucking belt with his own money. Um, and, you know, we know what that means. We've heard that story. They fucking stole it from me. They did this. They did that. So, I look at all this fucking... Uh, I look at, on the one hand, 2024, where we're at, July. And I look at 2020, episode seven of this, this uh, retrospective series that we're doing for the show. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm fucking drawing lines from one episode to this episode now and one episode back then that we did to this episode now and it eventually it just looks like a fucking spider's web you know what I mean because it's like um, this is insane um, it's insane to try to because the whole idea is to we watch movies and even if they're playing in theaters as we're speaking about them it's still as if they're in the past because we've already seen the movie and and we're what, going back to discuss what we've already seen, obviously. Sometimes we maybe we will do something that um, is more of an anticipation. Um, but it's always built on something from before, clearly. Um, so it's very strange to experience in the middle of this commemorate, commemorative series um, the going back to discuss how things were when we talked about them. But they're fucking like, they're still here, and it goes back to that um, that uh, that joke that you mentioned it in a previous episode. Where uh, uh, what's his name? The 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 he says he goes to sleep. Oh, and the great Paul Mooney. <laughs> the great Paul Mooney. Yeah. What is that joke? You want me to tell the joke? Um, I want to tell the joke. Paul Again. Mooney. Paul Mooney was at the comedy store, and he said um, he was talking about the lack of black representation in movies. And he was like, "I wrote a movie. It's called um, Rip Van Nigger. It's about a nigger that goes to sleep for a hundred years, and he wakes up. Nothing has changed." <laughs> I remember sitting in the back, laughing my ass off. And um, it's crazy because that was twenty years ago. That was 2000, that was about 2003, anywhere between 2003 and 2005 when I was, um, when I was at the comedy store and Paul Mooney was coming in on the regular and I would watch him. I would watch him like he was, he was this god of comedy to me. That's not an exaggeration. That is a full blown, uh, description of my admiration for him and, and comedy as a whole. And I would watch it and I thought that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's, it's. And it's a great joke because it has a basis in truth. A basis in truth. Today, it is the truth. And I'm just like, wow, how the fuck, how the fuck are things worse today, 20 years later than they were, um, you know, things weren't great, but they were getting better. We're backsliding. We're, we're, we're falling into this morass of, of, of paranoia, tribalism, and um, 
this con man's fucking uh, grift and not even a good con man. Anybody who has a brain in their head. I mean, I've, I've said it in the past. If you're for this man, you either have no humanity because you recognize you recognize what he's doing, but you like the economic possibilities of what it might mean to you in your 401k or your retirement plan or whatever. But if you honestly believe him and if you if you if you look at those pictures of him in the Oval Office, those paintings with Jesus be the 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 silhouette or the 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 impression of Jesus behind him guiding his very hand. I really have to wonder about your um I have to wonder about your intellect. Uh, you know, you you're not a bright person. How do you not see what is so glaringly obvious? You're, that that you're, turns somebody off, it turns them off. But what can you do? You have to sometimes you have to look at a situation for what it is and and comment on it um thusly. You're looking at it, I think, the way that um you're making I think the 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 mistake that we've all made. All of us basically who are on the left. Um <clears throat> And the Democratic Party is, it's kind of like, we're looking at this as a, like this intellectual yeah. thing. And we're looking at it as like, well, education is the answer. Um, and I'm not saying that it's not in terms of the broad cultural message. But what I mean specifically to shit like this is that it's kind of like, in September of 2020, we also did 9-11. Yeah. Um, and we can, we can use this as the backdrop for this portion of the conversation because already fucking it's been like 20 minutes just on fucking it's been 27 JFK minutes. as a backdrop yeah 27 minutes just mm -hmm. jfk just as a backdrop to talk about this what, what's happening with trump now and and we we went into this saying like fuck like how crazy that trump's shadow has been cast over um our show yeah however many episodes and that that, that they're not episodes about trump some are um, or they're Trump adjacent, but just in general. Um, and this is kind of a portion in our show's history where it's fucking heavy. Um, so you're, to me, you're making that. And, and I had that attitude with, um, when it came to like COVID and it was just like, fuck, like people don't get it. Like, um, if people just like, how is it that it doesn't make sense? Like, if you have a contagious disease, the best thing to do is to try to prevent the disease from spreading. And so you do whatever you can do to fucking stop that. So you avoid hanging out with tons of people, you wear masks, you get vaccinated, like, you're careful, you're fucking, like, you don't want your loved ones to die, fucking, who are maybe vulnerable, like, okay, be a little bit more responsible, like, we all, you know, like, we agree to not fucking run the red lights for that reason. But see, all that makes sense. But that's not, that's not it. The lizard brain is the fucking, uh, is it. It's, why is it the fucking sex sells? Why is it that? people use sex to fucking sell toothpaste our fucking like frontal brain is is going to be like that makes no sense like okay like your teeth your appearance okay how attractive you are okay blah yeah okay sure but that's not what's fucking motivating us like on a day-to-day -day basis even fucking like w what what i'm saying right now is less important than how I'm saying. The, the, my tonality, my inflection, the pauses, my tone, it's not really about the content. It's about the fucking, like, the transmission of the content. It goes back to, we talked about it last time, you brought it up before we started recording. Again, Nixon and JFK in the debate. On the radio, people said Nixon won because he made sense. And this goes Marshall McLuhan. It's the fucking medium. The medium is the message. On TV, 
JFK won. So on TV or on your on our phones, on our tablets, on our screens, Donald Trump didn't just fucking like survive. He fucking like he he went into the stratosphere with that fucking iconic shot. And so yeah, we we all know it's the same thing. We all know that fucking okay, the economy is actually better than it seems. And Biden blah blah blah. But people still think of Biden, not in a conscious way, but in an emotional way about fucking Biden as this sleepy Joe kind of character. This feeble old man. But this is the thing. Feeble old man. What I'm talking about is that even before this patriotic shot that has him standing there like fucking Superman defeating, you know, Lex Luthor, what I'm talking about is somebody who has a history of questionable behavior i'm talking sure. about somebody who was talked about fucking his own daughter and you know don't, don't be mistaken that is what he said he might not have said it in those words but he implied it um a man who talked about walking into women's dressing rooms because he could do it and catch a fucking cheap look um grabbing women by the pussies um he could shoot someone on fifth avenue and nothing would happen uh-huh and and probably the worst thing uh, in in two cases the worst thing for a um a christian a Christian society, married three times, divorced, um, different mothers of his children, and numerous affairs. There's that. Adjudicated rapist. Adjudicated rapist, as well as... Um, She's not my type. I didn't rape her. She's not my type. That's not, she wouldn't be the one. That's what he said. She <laughs> would. I can assure you, she would not be the one. And lastly, to stand up in front of... A on a, standard. Yeah. On a, on a national platform and call a man who I was no fan of. I was no fan of John McCain. But to say that this man was not a war hero, I like people who don't lose... Fuck yeah. this guy. The Republican Party should have looked at that and said, fuck this guy. But it's a testament to how weak-willed they are. This fucking cocksucker Nance that, that he's taken as his um his running mate. Vance. J.D. Yeah. Vance. J.D. Vance. Bill Billy Elegy. Yeah. This motherfucker, what, eight years ago, was a, was a violently vocal anti-Trumper. Never should be the case. Um... He is he is ill-equipped for the presidency and is now running with him. It's a testament to how these people stand for nothing. And I would say the same thing about the Democrats as well. Politics as a whole, th these are the worst. It, it Maybe at one time it did attract a certain type of person who wanted to do good for the public and considered themselves public servants. I do not see that today. I do not see people who are... Um, who are looking to govern and to help the American people. This is one of the worst shit shows that I've ever witnessed. And, um, you know, when we, did, when we did the podcast on JFK, when we did it on Nixon, um, when we did it on the Comey rule, we were taking a look at how um, those events in history affected the... The attitude yeah, and the beliefs rules. of yeah. yeah, the attitude and beliefs of the common people, because so much of us get a um, we get we are informed by film. Now, I said in the past episode or the episode before that, you can't look at history, f um, you can't look at movies as a history lesson. You can look at it as an interpretation of history, and then it's your obligation it's your job but really it's your obligation to go out there and find the truth for yourself every single one of us has an obligation to go out there and research and find and listen to both sides of an argument to find out and you really do need to listen to who you are against more than who is going to support you you need to listen to those people who who have a dissenting opinion from yours let's see the you sound like me when I'm trying to explain the meaning of some fucking movie that doesn't affect you emotionally. And you go, yeah, I get that, but I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck. No, that's not what I say. That's I, not what I say. No, no, what but, I say but, is the well, movie okay, doesn't well, me, resonate in this way. 
the movie is a, oh, what I say is that the hey, movie is a same failure. Shit. In, same shit. In, no, not the same shit at all. Not the same shit at all. Because you're talking about the difference between uh, uh, the practicalities of life and um, how this That's is going so to big. affect us. In a, well, so what? No, no. Because Listen. emotion, art is is a completely different thing. It affects you. It does. Yes, but this is not how people are watching. This is what I'm. The case. The point that I'm making mm -hmm. is that. You can say, well, how the fuck is it that Macho Man and Hulk Hogan, like, they were, uh, they were, they worked together, they were, and then they point. turned arch and then they were, uh, Yes, this is fucking like, why is it that now JD Vance is, is supporting uh, the, Trump because it's fucking because it's a show. No, I because get it. It's, it's a, a show. show. I get it. It's a show. I agree with that. It it's a show. And so, and, it's a and therefore, it has it to be in that. entertaining. It has to be fucking. Um, I'm gonna come from the. From where, and this is, and look, to further prove my fucking point, at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter the arguments that I make to you about any given movie because you're going to be, you're going to double down on your shit. You're going to say like, well, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't resonate with me. So it's a failure of a movie. And I'm going to say, well, it was a failure of a movie. How do you know the intention? Blah, 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 blah. And you're going to say, yeah, whatever. And everyone no, listening, I've never right said whatever. I've never said. I've never been dismissive like that in my attitude but, towards okay. a movie. Yeah. That's not the case. Listen, and they're enjoying it right now because yeah, we're okay. arguing. Yeah, but but the good. But this is the thing. It's fucking. It's not about what whether you said whatever. I interpreted your dismissive attitude as whatever, and so that's what sticks. That's what fucking sticks, and so it doesn't matter all these these points that that we're making it's like okay the comey rule episode uh 298 that was again november of 2020 right before the jfk episode and a little bit before that I, we had started we'd gone we wound a little bit back to 9-11 we did two episodes on 9-11 yeah one was one was what Michael happened. Moore. One was yeah. One was the the effects. I think it was called "Nothing Will Be the Same," or how everything changed, and it, it was to that. When it all and changed, then, and then we talked about the conspiracy documentaries, the the YouTube yes. shit, which right. is yeah. So, so episode two eighty eight was basically nine eleven and the films that basically described what happened and their effect their immediate effects. So World Trade Center movie by Oliver Stone. Um, we touched on Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, uh, Spike Lee's 25th Hour, which was the backdrop. Um, you know, it, it was this personal story, but with a backdrop of 9-11, of, uh, of uh, United 93. So that was okay. Like, this is what happened. And then we went into the loose change. Mm -hmm. uh, Fahrenheit 9-11... And then, which is the least crazy of them, but it's that one, uh, Loose Changes and all of its different versions because it's every time something is debunked, they have to fucking come out and say, oh, yeah, we revamped this, we re-edited this film to to up update. Um, and then The Greatest Lie Ever Sold, which is fucking like um, the most bombastic, ridiculous, dirty little fucking 9-11 uh, conspiracy film Um that it's probably the, the craziest one. Um, and it's Anthony Hilder um, and these cred incredible uh, zoom-ins and fucking like, and he's like, these men are monsters. And it's super B-movie, super crazy. It talks about, uh, it talks about, the Bilderberg, it talks about Skull and Bones, it talks about all of the shit that basically made Alex Jones his empire. And Alex Jones now is obviously fucked because of the lies that he told about Sandy Hook. And he built an empire on all of that. Um, and even recently I saw on someone's, uh, someone showed a clip, some YouTuber uh, popular on the left, progressive left, showed a clip of of Alex Jones recently, rather recently, but before the, the events of Saturday, the, the assassination attempt, talking about the best thing 
and this is I'm, this is not me saying it. So if you're coming in like halfway, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a page from from fucking um, William Friedkin's thing. It's like I'm not saying these are not my words. Don't be stupid. Um, to or don't be an idiot or whatever William Friedkin said when he was like, because he was said Jesus. Remember Jesus and Hitler. Yeah. Um, and, and it's kind of like this characters in history yeah. exactly because that's going back to what i was saying earlier about fucking this is all a fucking wrestling match this is all fucking entertainment and you and i and everyone yes with a brain knows that it's not just that but we still respond to it as people who respond to stories and we respond to myths and we respond to media and we respond to how we interpret what we're hearing not necessarily what the other person's saying you may not be saying like, I don't give a fuck about this movie. I think it's boring or I think fucking it's not what I like or it's not my shit, whatever. Fuck this movie. You may not be saying that, but you might as well be. This may not have been set up. This this 9-11, these twin towers, when you say, okay, well, actually three towers fell. Oh, shit. Three towers fell. Ah, I can tell you how this fucking was a conspiracy and then some engineer is like no like it's this and then some other engineer is like i'm an engineer it's a conspiracy same fucking thing ap news article one screen two movies like that's the that's the fucking like that's the that's the line right there because we all could see the buildings fall, but we all have a fucking like different thing because it's a different interpretation because it's an emotional, that's an emotional reaction that we're having. And just cause we can see it doesn't mean that it's that we know what the fuck is happening. I've said this before in the morning, we see the sun come up, right? Is that what's really going on? No. Does the sun revolve around the earth? No. Does the sun revolve around fucking Trump? Yes. It was a crazy fucking year, and it's a crazy year now. Um, we also did George Orwell's 1984 and V for Vendetta. Yeah. Also in November, because we, we were, it was like election fucking um, election time, just as it is now. And so we were, we were building towards all of that. And on the one hand, it's like, oh, big brother. And right now people are saying like, fuck, Trump is... He's going to fucking eliminate democracy. Project 2025. Going back to what you said, do your fucking research. Taraji B. Henson, look it up. Right? She gets on that stage, she's like, look it up. And her fucking tone probably got more people to look it up than fucking however many, like, commentators. Um, yeah, that's the sad truth of it. I mean, I, I don't deny that. I'm not it's communication. Saying, this is how it is. You know. And it's fucking, you, we can say that it's shallow, we can say whatever it is, but it, this is fucking human nature. This is how we are. It is true. Um, and But, you know, in some cases, if that gets you across the fucking, you know, uh, finish line, then okay. But, um, I mean, it, it, there's a part of me that is, it, it's, it's how incredibly many times sad. Has it not? You went to a good school, and uh, uh, what did that do for you? I, I, Nothing. I did, you went to a better school than me. Mm-hmm. I had a great GPA. Um I'm very, I'm very, I'm hugely smart to use uh, <laughs> Donald Trump's language, right? <laughs> All right no one cares. All right, we're we're stopping no right cares. now. I'm, I'm going, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> Fuck this! I don't need this shit. No one cares. <laughs> no one gives a shit. It's like, it's it's. I got more reaction by fucking saying something ridiculous than by anything else I've said this whole fucking time. Have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? Yeah, yeah. Have you played that game? Yeah. Who wins? The most ridiculous motherfucker at the, at the table. That's it. Every time. I mean, every fucking time. But that's uh, and it's, it's they should call it cards for humanity because that's how we are. 
at some point, it's the I, biggest I know, stories, yeah. the broadest stories. It's Jesus and Hitler. It's fucking um, God versus the for devil. God so yeah. loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Well, how much of a sacrifice was that when you knew you were going to give us Donald Trump? I mean, come on now. That's even greater. <laughs> it's bigger. It's much bigger. So much bigger. Huge. And I hope that was Huge. offensive. I hope, you know, because Huge. sometimes you need to be slapped in the face. I mean, I, I sent you the picture of, I don't know, whatever fucking Pope it was, or I, maybe it was Jesus, anointing uh, uh, Donald Trump with, with, a, with a crown and a, I don't know what else. And it's like, I, I'm sorry that I have to ask this of you and trump oh it's boxes. jesus is yeah i will and save your people i will save your people and it's like are you fucking kidding me have you seen this cocksucker in an interview is that can you can you name your favorite bible verse well you know i don't want to talk about that because it's a little bit too <laughs> personal and it's like <laughs> yeah but you know those lines fucking you have those lines down fucking pat you off book on that script exactly and it's just like but that's what i'm talking about that that's it's like all right if you want to be fooled that's I, I there's nothing i can do about that but how how do you not i mean how do you not recognize a bullshit artist for but i mean bullshit artists run the world and they're able to i mean there's part of it that's the thing of course there's got there's there's got to be part of it where they're like i know he's lying but like i like it yeah i like the pain um so it's like it, it you know i mean Shit, I grew up. I grew up in the shadow of Ronald Reagan, and hearing people talk about what a bullshit artist he was, and and his being a failed shitty actor somehow made him the best actor in 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 Washington. Maybe that was the truth. I think the dangerous difference is that um, Donald Trump is so ridiculously. Um, there's no handicapping him. There's no figuring out what what he's going to do, what he's going to say, and who's going to suffer because of it if they don't fall in line. Um, that's the scariest fucking thing. Is that you know at least Reagan was predictable. At least George H. W. Bush was predictable. Shit, even even George W. Bush to a degree was predictable. You can't say. The only predictable aspect of, of Donald Trump is is the unpredictability, is knowing. That's it. Yeah, is knowing that it is, you know, after a certain point, it stopped being funny because it was like, you stopped being shocked by all of the stupid, ridiculous, and, and um, asinine things that he did and said because after a while you just said, well, that's Trump. What else do you Let's expect? You're the fucking asshole if you believe it's going to be anything other than that. Hey, every time he fucking sells out the crowds, mm -hmm. he fucking and I'm not I'm not championing this. I'm just um, I'm just uh, reporting on it. I I'm it. fucking reporting on yeah. this. Yeah. I'm just I'm and I'm in full fucking cynic cynical mode. No, I know. Saying saying like um, it's the fucking optics and. And this is the audience that that either we've always been or or, or the audience that we've become. Well, maybe um, it's, you know, they, they talk about you get the president that you deserve. But maybe even further than that, maybe the species doesn't deserve to continue. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we've outlived our practicality on this earth if we ever had one to begin with. Um, I don't know. We, we, we have failed in so many attempts to civilize ourselves. We, we have this idea of civilization. We have this idea of living together in a, in a, in a, in a world of mutual respect, dignity, and, um, and love. But has you that ever, that wait, 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 I'm not done. I'm not done. But has that ever been the actual world that we lived in or has it always no. been simply um has it always been simply uh bullshit that we painted ourselves with that's the brush i mean i you know 
Even amongst couples, it's a war over who gets thermal control. Yeah, there's that. But even, but like on a bigger level, let's say I like I, I remember I remember pissing off a lot of fucking patriotic bastards when they would tell me, "Oh, Iran's going to get the bomb. Pakistan's going to get the bomb. They're developing this. They're developing that." And my answer was, "Okay, yeah, that's dangerous, but." Who's the only country in the world that has ever actually dropped an atomic bomb? Who's the only country in this world that has ever dropped nuclear weapons on another country? We're the only ones. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm not saying fuck America because of that, but what I am saying is look at the fucking look at the whole picture. Look at the bigger picture of everything. Um if you're sitting here and you don't think that the rest of the world has a reason to be both in awe and fear of America, then you're not reasonable. Um, Putin. And Pakistan has bombs. Yeah. Sorry. Pakistan has They've bombs. They've been having bombs. Oh, this, this, was, this was many years. This is when I was a young man. This is when I was a young, angry man that still had fight in him. Now I'm just a disappointed, bitter old man who... I want, I, you know, there was a time when I said, I don't give You're a done. shit anymore, but no, it's, 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 if, if we Rick. didn't, if we didn't, if we didn't care, we wouldn't be having this conversation at this point. The problem Clearly. is, yeah. the problem is that we're, our, our back is against the wall on a one way dead end street. There's no way of getting out of this. I don't see a fucking, the Democrats are, the Democrats would have to throw such an incredible Hail Mary play. And I just don't see that happening. Number one, because I don't think there's a candidate that can that they can move into that position right now. I don't think that there's somebody that they can get up to the level to beat a Trump right now. But also, um, Democrats have displayed over the years that um, they don't have the fight in them. I don't know if I don't know if Joe Biden won the last election or Donald Trump lost it. Like with Hillary and Donald Trump, I don't know if Donald Trump won it or Hillary lost it. I think Hillary lost that election. Yeah, I, I mean, it's she again, fumbled that. It's like, you know what I mean? And there, that, that's a subtle. That, that's not even a subtle difference, but it is a difference that sure. that you have to recognize. So I, I think people were it's, just. Well, it's like the debate. Yeah. Did fucking did Trump win? What happened? Um, I think it was the CIA. I said, um, <laughs> I said, yeah, in the a, last I'm debate, leaving that in. <laughs> I was marking the I time said, to cut it out, but no, it's staying. <laughs> you were saying the last debate. It looks like I'm gonna have to cut this part out because I can't hear you for anything. What are you saying? Speak to me, goose. Come on, goddamn it. I'm gonna. Um... Hello. I'm back. Hello. Yeah. You know what happened? What? Um. My mom is using the car. Mm -hmm. and my Bluetooth was in, and then right now I could hear an <laughs> echo of my voice from the fucking car. It connected to her shit. That's the same problem I have with uh, every once in a while, a little hook. It'll just, I fucking hate technology. I do. <laughs> All right. So, I'll fix um, it in. I'll fix. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll do it live. We're leaving it. We'll do huh? it live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they're going to be like, God damn, they went full fucking political on this episode. Um, we're about to move on. We're going to keep yeah. moving, but... Um, are you ready? Uh, go. I just got to mark the where I got to cut. 5330. That should do it. 5345. Go ahead. It's, uh, yeah, sorry, the CIA mm -hmm. fucking uh, had to... Uh, I had to listen in there, but it's yeah. It, can't, we look. can't be we can't be allowed to influence forty three people. That, that that shit's just not acceptable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially you know, uh -huh. it's like uh, forty three people with cups of coffee. Exactly, it's fucking scary. 
That's a revolution. I am baby. America. Go ahead. <laughs> I am America. I'm a winner who lost every battle up to and including the war. I'm not the American nightmare. I am the American dream, period. That's why the system works, because I am the system, period. In December of 2020, we did Oliver Stone's Nixon, and we did Robert Altman's Secret Honor. Yes. We did all the president's men. Mm -hmm. um, fucking Nixon episode. Um, Nixon month. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was it was nuts. Um, this is all related to that shit. The life and times... The lifetimes in cinema of Richard Milhouse Nixon. Life imitates art, art imitates life. At least back then it was like, it was different because fucking he knew that he was like, oh shit, like I need to step down. Well, it was more and than just that are. he knew that he needed to step down. His party told him, you need to step down. There was a level of responsibility, that. yeah. Goldwater yes, and, and here, a number of others, yeah. And here, the Democratic Party now is saying, Biden, like, Joe, come on, like, we're, we're going to fucking, like, you're going to take it all down with us because it's the optics. It's the fucking optics. It's exactly what I'm saying. Like, people no, can make right. all these arguing that. I'm not arguing that point. People Does can it, say all yeah. this shit about, look, this is what, this is what, um, all the things that Biden did. And you can go look it up, right? Read about it. And it'll look different when you're reading it than it will if you're fucking listening to fucking Tucker Carlson or or uh, Joe Rogan or Laura Ingram or um, Piers Morgan or whoever, you know what I mean? Or, or, or Dr. Phil. Um, it's going to look different. Or Bill Maher. It's going to look different than how it sounds when they're on their stage. And when you see these cut up clips of Joe Biden, um, you know, Donald Trump, a bullet grazes his ear and he gets up and he pumps his fist. Joe Biden falls on his own. Those are the clips we're watching. It doesn't have to be reality. Right now, if you want to fucking, you want to masturbate to Alyssa Milano, you can. You want to watch, uh, you want to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger on Tom Cruise's face or vice versa or whatever, you, we can do that now. And so it's like, well, fake news and this, and it's kind of like, it's all up for fucking grabs, folks. It's all up for fucking grabs. From where we had actually left off last time, it was these these gritty little fucking posts. This, 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 we had started to do, we did uh, Contagion, and then we went into uh, some zombie movies. We went through some Sam Peckinpah. Mm -hmm. We did the LA riots, Spike Lee's Vietnam War with the Five Bloods. Um, talked a little bit about dead presidents also. Um, Escape from LA and Escape from New York. We did the Princess Bride, fucking Andre the Giant, you know? Yeah. Um, we went into Predator. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Predator, that's a fucking, from the same era, a fucking, um, the 80s, patriotism, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, fucking uh, Jesse Ventura, in and out of politics, from wrestling to politics, from fucking Hollywood to politics, in and out, in and out. We did Bad Lieutenant and Uncut Gems, yeah. watching fascinated by these fucking train wreck fucking uh, self-destructive people you can we can't take our eyes off of uh harvey Kelt this is episode 278 harvey Keitel stands 
literally naked before us. That's something super that, compelling. That yeah, but you know the naked thing. It's essential to the performance. It's essential to the film. For that one. Yeah. yeah for that. Well, yeah. Well, Harvey finds an excuse every fucking time. <laughs> but um, the thing about that is it overshadows the nakedness of the performance because there's so much. I, I don't know what kind of problems Harvey kind I think so. I think it overshadows um, n- not necessarily in intention, but in perception. So the audience who who watches it either giggles like like we do, but you know, but is also dismissive of something like that. When the truth of it is that Kaitel is so emotionally naked on that screen right. as to make it uncomfortable. His nakedness is not the uncomfortable part of that movie. It's it's how. It, it's how yeah, coked it's, out it's, of his mind yeah. and at the end of his rope and how um, I don't know how you can watch that movie and never imagine that that this is um, you know sometimes you watch a movie and you you look at it as a fantasy and how you'd like to jump into that and there's a there's that there's that mystical quality about cinema that that wants you to that, want, that makes you want to draw into the world that is being created but bad lieutenant is such an ugly and um depressing exercise that um i think you have to question certain things about yourself psychologically if you embrace the movie and i'm counting myself as one of its biggest champions i i think i think it's an incredible film but i i I do have to ask myself, what does this say about me that I love this movie? It means the way you're a I human do. being. You're a fucking human being. Yeah, but <laughs> what what kind of a human being? Charles Manson was a human being. I mean, you know what I mean. We're all that, from the same fucking <laughs> cloth, and and you bring him up because it's like we like monsters. Yeah, and the the, the lieutenant is a monster. It's um, I but think, he's also a hero. Yeah, he is a hero. It was strange that we paired that with Uncut Gems because those are both two films. I remember seeing Uncut, Uncut Gems in a theater. I took my mom to see it, I think. Um, and I watched it. And I don't remember a film making me that... Um, I don't know if... I, I guess the way I described it then was it got the blood pressure and the heart rate going at such a ridiculous rate. Do you remember that? I saw it on my birthday. Um, Hell of a present to yourself. Well, I was sick, that, and then after I was, I thought about it later, and I was like, um, "Did I have COVID?" Yeah. Um, but this is, um, I think it had, it had come out like the year before, mm-hmm. before we recorded, or or months before we recorded, and and so, um, so. I was uh, I was sick, and I just was like, "Come on, like, let's go." Yeah. And I was, I mean, I wasn't like super fucking like not. I was just like, "Oh, I have a, like a cold, right?" Um, um, which is what I actually what I do think I had, just a cold. And um, and so uh, so I went, and so um, that's what we fucking saw, and um. And it was just like, wow, this is fucking crazy. This is a crazy film, and it's um, the self destruction, the yeah. addiction, the fucking the the ups and downs, the all looking for that fucking, and then he looks inside of that 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 stone, and it's this transportive fucking almost two thousand and one space odyssey kind of like journey into the the dimensions of the stone, right? Um, and how far he'll go, and obviously, he takes it as far as it takes him. Um, and the performances are so fucking like extreme and unhinged. Um, it was a journey. It was fucking. It was yeah. yeah. And you want, and you, you're watching. You can't take your eyes off of it. We can't take our eyes off of the buildings collapsing. We can't take our eyes off of the Spruder film. Back into the left. Back into the left. Whether it's back into the left or not, that's what we hear. We hear through Oliver Stone's film. We hear fucking uh, Kevin Costner describing the shot came from the front, back, and to the left. 
over and over and over. And it's these these lines. Um, I have a dream. Whatever side, whatever whatever it is, it's these lines, these catchphrases that they stay. Make America great again. Obviously, make America great again is not on the level of I have a dream in terms of the oratory, the delivery. Depends the on who you're meaning, talking to. The, that's exactly you're you're exactly fucking right. You're exactly. I mean, some people are going to say like it is everything. Um, they uh, make America great again is probably to them more important than you know we hold these truths to be self-evident that blah 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 white people are supreme um so um that's that it's 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 the monster movie it's horror it's fucking it's what gets the blood going that's it we did uh an episode on the death of Ennio Morricone so all the spaghetti westerns, um, mm-hmm. untouchables, casualties. Um, we Hateful did that. Eight. Yeah. April eight. We um, we were approaching the fucking dystopian um, authoritarian films, which you know we're that shadow is over us also. So um, Terry Gilliam's Brazil. You know, which we called the episode we called it 1984 and a half. Which is um, it's um, interesting because you had talked a little bit when we were when we were going into the whole uh, when we were going into the, the the Trump discussion 20 minutes ago. You mentioned um, I don't know what director it was, but the John Hurt Richard Burton 1984 adaptation, uh, which is a good film for what it is, but 1984 and a half, <laughs> Gilliam's Brazil. It's so much more powerful, and I, I think I think I'm going to make time to watch it this week because I think I need something like that to comment and to balance out what's going on in the world right now. Um, the scariest thing about Gilliam's film is how normalized everything is in the film. None of it is played for laughs. None of it, none of it is waka waka kind of wink at the camera. Um, I think what's really disturbing about it is how accepting everybody in that in that world is of the bureaucracy and the government that they have created the fact that they have given over so much of themselves to this idea of um of this corporatized uh governmental fascistic world um if you if you look at if you look at Brazil, I don't think that's too far off of the possibility, at least, of what the United States may become. I can see that happening. I don't know if I'm, I'm if I'm being too reactionary or too. Um, I think I think that's a I think that's a, gr- a major obstacle that we're we're facing down the line. I'd, I'd love to, your, to hear your opinion because that's what's really interesting is that that was 2020. This is almost this is almost exactly four years ago that we had that conversation. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it was in July, right? July of 2020 is when it posted. So I don't know. I don't know. We we might have recorded it on the 16th, the 15th. It might be. It might be almost a, an entire four years. It might be exactly four years ago. That we recorded that episode. It's crazy because it's like the the, and I don't remember exactly if we talked about this, but it's kind of like, um, is it Brave New World or is it fucking 1984? Mm-hmm. Um, is it when we imagine? That something that on that level, um, is it like armies in the streets, or is it something that, um, or is it soma? Is it 
is it that we're sold this uh, these pleasures to keep us each in our places, each in our in our whatever level of the stratified system that we're at. Um, is it fucking um, what's that fucking animated film Which where um, the the one with the cockroach and the fucking robot Wally, and Wally. the Wally, is it Wally, um, which we haven't talked about just yet? Have um, to. We will. Yeah. Um, is it you know? Is it fucking the Republicans suspending the fucking Constitution and elections and oh, I'm gonna be a dictator for a day, but actually forever? Um, or is it the fucking? Um, is it the reign of the phone in our hand? That it's like, well, I think the, the, the algorithm says, I think I know what I can sell you, whether I do or not. It may not be your exact searches. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's just based on the demographic that I think you're in. Sometimes it's, if you click on any of those things of why are you getting this ad? And it says it's based on, based on age and location. You know, it's and and it's very, it's all very fucking stereotypical. It might be fucking, um, you know, why is it that fucking people are like, oh, put a liquor store here? Um, the stereotypes. It's fucking, it, put a fucking chicken place there, put a taco stand there, put a, or is it that fucking the crowds? That's what they want. I want a fucking liquor store there. I want a taco stand there. There's nothing wrong with any of those things and what i'm saying is like is it top down is it bottom up is it a mix is it this is it that the twin towers we're watching them fucking collapse and everybody has a different opinion about it amateur and professional um plenty of doctors who were calling bullshit on COVID. well, well you know who's buttering their bread right um yeah. what show are they watching George Carlin, it's fucking, what is that fucking skit where he fucking wants shit to get worse and crazier mm -hmm. and crazier and crazier? What is, that, what is that skit even called? Does it have a name? I I remember the bit was, um, I remember him talking about he was a fan of entropy and um, this idea that things will get worse and they'll just pile on each other. I, I, I'd have to look it up. I don't remember. It was one of my favorite things that yeah, he did. He basically wants the fucking fire and brimstone. He keeps mm -hmm. describing it in this beautifully, and you're like enthralled. And it's just like it's a, it just underscores everything that we're talking about. Um, from there, we did uh, we did a, a solo episode um, in a lonely place. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Ray. Ray. We did fucking night moves. Arthur Penn. Two movies that I'd really wanted to see for a long time, and I wasn't disappointed by them. Um, I think you were on vacation at that point, and I, um, I was just going through the. I was I was playing. Um, I was playing noir against neo noir, and it was a lot of fun to do that. I enjoyed that a lot. We moved on to um, we, one of the best things that I think we've seen was was a revisit for me. With uh, we went back to Jarmouche. Remember? Yeah, coffee and cigarettes. You know what was interesting about flips. that is that you and I liked, you and I liked different segments of that differently. Of course, we did. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know which ones I loved. Nice, nice. <laughs> but um, yeah. But it also the second viewing opened up certain things to me that I had missed the first time, and uh, the subtlety of of Jarmusch. Jarmusch is is an interesting director because he. He allows his camera to capture things, and I, I it seems effortless in in some ways. And when it works, it's brilliant like this. When it when it's bad, it's that um, whatever that movie with the hitman was that I hated. Um, 
Oh, The Limits of Control? The Limits of Control, yeah. Um, great actors, but... Um, That's his best film. You like that, of course you do. <laughs> I just liked it because you said you hated it. I know, I know. And I'm creating drama. There's a pointlessness to it that, that really stabs you. Um, That's really meaningful. The pointlessness is the most meaningful part of it. That, that is the idea of what he's trying to go. Yeah, I get it. Um, but with with um with Jermush, I, I really do dig the fact that he's able to take these um uh something as as something as basic as meeting up and bullshitting over coffee and f you know, creating these these little vignettes that I think are are beautifully realized because when you think about it, um, there's there's nothing that I love more than getting together with with a friend. Right? Maybe it's maybe it's the age, but I think I was doing this even before. There's nothing that I love more than getting together with a friend and either having breakfast or coffee. I love that. I mean, it wasn't coffee, but wasn't it? I mean, maybe it was fucking. What they used to, they were now and later, but they used to come now later, so a fucking, <laughs> fucking, uh, some stupid candy or yeah. gum that is supposed to, that looks like a cigarette. I, I mean, that. we've been doing this, it's fucking like, we do this all our lives. Um, Terrence McKenna made the kind of fucked up joke about like language was invented so we could lie to one another. Um, like, I don't know if that's the a first fucked up joke. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 it's like we're story machines yeah basically and the first thing you do is like you fucking tell stories you you we tell stories about how shit the world is we tell ourselves stories about how it is we tell each other stories about how it's supposed to be um we come home from school and you know, if, if we have that kind of situation at home, we fucking tell our parents, like, hey, mom, dad, guess what happened? Like, blah, blah, blah. And it's always fucking more intense than it actually was because fucking that's how it is. And, and the monster is always scarier and bigger. The hero is always scarier and bigger. Um, the it's, it's always that. And it's fucking, like, that's the podcast breaking bread or else fucking sharing a drink fucking whatever it is it's when people listen to us they're listening to us because it's fucking coffee and cigarettes um and they're at the table with us fly on the wall a fucking friend at the table um same thing you fucking like it's it's that's what we do and the film is that and a lot of shit is like sometimes it's talking a lot about nothing sometimes it's fucking making it so much larger than it is um that's what we do at work the fucking co the, the the cool water cooler talk um locker room banter right um mm -hmm. it's all talk it's all fucking talk stories movies literature poetry sitting around the fire songs everything is a fucking story whether it's a painting or a fucking newspaper ad or a fucking magazine or a tiktok thing or a fucking instagram post or a reel or it's everything is about fucking story everything and the best fucking most compelling stories win. That's it's not fucking merit. It's not um who was good, who was right, who makes the most sense, who comes to the most logical conclusion in the courtroom, in the classroom, in church, in the temples, in the souks, in the streets, in the bedroom in the ballroom, at the bar, at the bank, everywhere, story wins. That's nice. it. Story fucking wins. 
from there, you did a solo episode, uh, The Commitments. Mm-hmm. Um, we came back, going back to Car- Cartel, we did uh, Smoke, uh, Blue in the Face. It's kind of little, little films. Um, you did some uh, John Alton stuff. Um, John Alton, that was a Rob fun episode Hill. because that was just about, um, you know, I first, I first became aware of that guy in a movie called Visions of Light from the early yeah. 90s. I've told you about that. I don't know if you've ever actually seen it. Oh, I think I've seen some. I think you've shown me some. I've shown you some of it. because It's a hard movie to find. I have an old DVD copy of it. Um, but it's, I, it's a movie... It's a movie that made me fall in love with a certain aspect of filmmaking. Because um, before that, I think you, I think you're aware of cinematography, but you're not. Um, I don't know. Maybe you're familiar with cinema. You're 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 familiar with cinematography, but you're not truly aware of it. I'm, I mean, to be to be like cognizant and then like, oh my God, that's a beautiful shot. And uh, to hear all of these great cinematographers. Uh, 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 Nestor Almenderos, uh, Vittorio Storaro, uh, Ernest Dickerson, Caleb Deschanel. Uh, uh, oh, there's so many great guys in that. Um, uh, Conrad Hall. Uh, so many people who are who are talking about what made them fall in love with the movie making process, and then you watch a movie, and it's never more apparent. Maybe, maybe it's unfair. To focus on um, film noir when you talk about cinematography because it's so pronounced. There's so much playing with shadow, black and white, um, coming out of the darkness and smoke that it's almost unfair to you know. It's like it's like talking about Kurosawa and and speaking of Seven Samurai. It's like yeah, of course, that that's fucking obvious. But um, you watch a movie like that. You watch, and these are not great films. T Man, Raw Deal, and He Walked by Night are not. He Walked by Night are not great films per se. But as you watch them, you're really drawn into the look of the film, and it really is the kind of thing where you're just like you're blown away. If you're focusing on that, I mean that for me, for me, for me, it it um it meant the world. It's so easy to just look at something that mm-hmm. that is compelling and find. I mean, we've been talking about story, right? And hearing something or seeing that, and it's like same thing with something that it and story doesn't even have to say anything. It could just be something that's beautiful, and it's just kind of like whether it's a beautiful woman, a beautiful person, a beautiful animal, um, a beautiful like trees moving with the breeze, and you just kind of just go wow, like there's just something. Um, captivating and it's it's crazy how humans are just we're just viewers you know yeah from there we went into um the war zone you recommended tim roth's film to me and it was a fucked up film um you know what i recommended it to you but i had never seen it either Episode two eighty seven. Mm-hmm. You had never seen it. I had never seen it. It was a film that had been sitting on my shelf for more than a decade. And sometimes I have movies that are just there that I keep telling my. It's like you know, you have books. I'm going to read that book. Of course. You, but but you're yeah. not. You know. And one of the great things about this show is that it gives me. It it forces the hand. And um, I took into a. I I balanced everything out and saying there's no way that this can't. This can't win. Although there was a good chance that it would be a colossal failure, right? but I looked at I looked at um, Ray Winstone, Tilda Swinton, both actors that I admire greatly. Um, I looked at the subject matter, which was going to be problematic, and then I looked at the fact that Tim Roth directed it and has never directed anything else. And I thought to myself, well, either this is going to be incredible or it's going to be a fucking horrible. Um, we, I took a chance and I gotta tell you it was one of the most moving films that I've seen ever it's one of the most moving films I've ever seen I, I just I was I was blown away I was angered I was depressed I was disgusted 
it was, and, and I was also very sad. And uh, that's not a really great endorsement for a movie. This is not, hey, let's, uh, let's go see Bad Boys Ride or Die. That's not what this is. This is one of those films where you really do love, you, you love acting, you love directing, and you love narrative. Because um, we've done a few films that deal with this kind of subject matter. I'm thinking this one, I'm thinking L.I.E. Um, incredibly brave performances by both Ray Winstone and Brian Cox in the second film. Um, and, and everybody involved, because this is subject matter. This is a film about incest, which is not something, I mean, how the hell do you even get something like that made? Yeah, rape and incest. Yeah. And um, I think I cried during this movie. I think I think this movie broke me down. I think, I, but I'm an easy touch at this point in my life. But I, I think it really did affect me. When you know, it's one thing to be a cynical, angry bastard. It's another thing to see the evil that is in this world depicted as it is without um and i imagine that whatever tim roth showed the reality is thousands of times worse but if what he could show could affect me in the way that it affected me watching this movie mm -hmm. then number one i count myself lucky to have the life that i've had and um it makes me sad to know that the world is filled with this kind of of sickness, selfishness. Uh, I don't even know what the fuck you would call it. The movie left me conflicted in so many ways because Winstone is a character that you, there's a charm to him. Brian Cox has, that, has a similar charm in L.I.E. You understand the process which allows them to do what they do, or at least the game plan, while at the same time making you, but by, while at the same time sickening you to the realities of it. But also the, the understanding that, I mean, I think we all can look back at our childhoods and remember some kid in our class who wasn't right and movies like this play through your head I don't know if you feel that way that's the way I feel about it movies movies make me think about real life in a way that I don't know if it's the healthiest thing this whole episode has been that yeah I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't disagree with that it's a great from film. there we went yeah it's a, it's 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 powerful um from there we went to uh well you did another solo on uh the cinematographer michael chapman mm -hmm. great great filmmaker if you if you if you've ever wondered why taxi driver and goodfellas uh no not that taxi driver and raging bull are so beautiful to look at it's um it's that man working on incredibly limited budgets and and producing something that have just Beautiful invasion of the body snatchers. Hal Ashby's the last detail. Um, I mean, just I remember when I read that he'd passed. I just felt like, damn. I was like, that's a, that's a loss. Hmm. We um, we moved. We did. We talked about nine eleven. We we did. Uh, mm -hmm. We moved into October, so we did a uh, creep show. Yeah. Stephen King and George Romero. Yeah, we went into um, our annual Halloween horror themed. Um, yeah, we did John Carpenter's The Fog, mm -hmm. Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, episode two ninety three, and now talking about it, two thousand twenty four. Shelley Duvall just died. Yeah, it was another one that kind of was like, you kind of knowing the last few years of her life, there was a kind of. Um, relief i guess I mean, hopefully it brought her some kind of peace i guess i don't i don't know why 
I don't, I don't know what any of that is, but um, the woman, the woman suffered. Yeah. Yeah. So we we did that, and we did the uh, room two thirty seven, which is a, a a documentary, a fucking crazy <laughs> conspiracy theory documentary revolving around Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, it goes back to the same shit, like. We're all watching The Shining, but there's there's actually secret stuff in there. There's more to it, man. Well, there's there's secret stuff projected onto it. I don't know if that's well, what course. Kubrick intended. Maybe he did. Maybe he did it. Um, Maybe he was like, "Fuck it, like, I gotta." I mean, that's the thing. It's like I gotta let people know that I fake the moon landing, uh, but I have to do it this way. Yeah. And only only this guy was gonna see it, but that's enough. You, uh, you did an, an episode, uh, 10 horror films to go back to. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the films. Uh, That's the problem. I got to listen to the episode again. I'm really interested because maybe 24. there's something there that I, yeah. Um, I'll buy yourself a cup of coffee, tune <laughs> in. Um, episode 295, James Whale. Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein, the the classics. Yeah. Um, we did. Uh, you did a face in the crowd. That was a. I'm kind of sorry. I'm really sorry know. that you didn't do that with me because I think it's a film that you would have had a lot to say about. You should have. You should have seen. You should see it. We might want to go into it and revisit it before the election because I think it's a very I think it's a film that really speaks to um what's going on and I don't know if I don't know if uh I know a lot of people have commented on Andy Griffith's performance in Kazan's film they they could not have known what would come 60 some odd years later but to see it play out the way it does in that film and um with the Trump presidency is really a kind of um, depressing thing. Yeah, I mean, it's um, November 2020. It was uh, what you described as uh, one of the great warnings in cinematic history. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we did what we, had, what we opened with. We moved you know, the, 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 the other election related type of stuff. We went into uh, you, you, uh, you flew solo again with um, Belushi. Um, yeah, I, uh, I think that was a combination of. I think you were out, but you didn't have that close personal relationship. I mean, I grew up. Yeah, this is one. This is one that you you needed to do alone. Yeah, I needed. I mean, <laughs> there's a couple of roads I have to walk with myself. Um, Belushi was one of them, but, but it was like. Um, Belushi, it's sad because there's such a huge pop. Generations have moved to the degree that um, nobody knows who he is now. People of my yeah. age know who he is, and a couple of you know, a couple of people younger than me might might have gravitated towards. They might stumble upon Animal House, or they might see the Blues Brothers, but they don't they don't truly understand the the force. The John Belushi was, and I think the documentary did a pretty decent job of capturing that and talking about it. And but also, he was one of the first heavy casualties of uh, drugs in the entertainment industry. I mean, it had you could you could definitely cite Janis Joplin and um, Jimi Hendrix, Keith Moon, and um, yeah, the music side. Yeah. Yeah, John Paul Jones, right? Didn't he die of? Uh... No, John Paul Jones is um. Someone's always fucking over John Paul Jones. He's always forgotten. The <laughs> silent fucking member of Led Zeppelin. He lives. Well, how did that motherfucker die? Come on, <laughs> you give voice to this silent motherfucker that nobody. <laughs> He's alive. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah. Um, John Bonham is the drummer. Oh, John Bonham. John Bo yeah. Okay, Bonham. Yeah. yeah. Okay. John Henry Bonham. <laughs> <laughs> and that was drugs, though. Right? Of course, I'm Paul Jones. 
Uh, that was a lot of alcohol. That was a lot of alcohol. A lot of uh, screwdrivers. Yeah. Like so was, 40 screwdrivers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking him, we're, him, Bon Scott, uh, a lot of those guys. And But but Belushi, Belushi was the wake-up call to the 80s Coke binges. Because it, as, as ridiculous as it sounds, they really didn't believe Coke was addictive back then. Can you believe that? Knowing what we know now, can you can you imagine? Uh, the scientists and the doctors probably knew, but they were coked up too. It was the eighties. We need to go well, back. Well, he died from the sweet ball, right? He died from the sweet ball, yeah. A mixture of coke cocaine and heroin. and heroin, yeah. Which I can't imagine a worse. You know, why would you want to go up and down at the same time? But um, I'm not a drug person, so I can't. Health is skelter. No. Yeah. Yeah. When I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide. That's it. Yeah. It's something we should go back to. Anyway, we went on to um, 302. This was a lot of fun. I introduced you to Sam Fuller. You remember that? Yeah. Did Naked you kiss shot quarter? Did yeah. you know who he was? You knew who he was, right? I had heard the name, and I think I'd seen some stuff in a film class, like some scenes. Mm -hmm. well, um, those two films knocked us on. I, but, but the thing is, I had never seen either of those two films. So we, we jumped into it. I had seen other films that he had done, but those two films, and I, I think it was especially um, The Naked Kiss, was really creepy. You remember? The, the horror. There was something. There town. was some. There, there was. His movies had a kind of. Um, an immediacy to them that was. Uh, there was something about it that was like. It was just really. And I guess because it was new, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, because it felt new. Maybe that's it. But it, it just was like. Um, it was just, it felt very fresh. And then, um, and then seeing like, uh, clips of him. Yeah. I remember that, like seeing clips of the man himself, um, bigger than life, and just way like bigger than life. This old fucking, um, mm -hmm. yeah, this old character that like, uh, you see him sitting around with a fucking big ass cigar He's fucking like, uh, he just seems like a character, mm -hmm. like fucking a type of Hollywood, but like a certain type of older Hollywood, not fucking, uh, not mogul type, but just kind of like raw. And I, and I, I guess, I mean, even, even the, the titles, the naked kiss shot corridor, um, they sound like something that some cigar chomping asshole is gonna fucking like. Uh, well, there's another work one. On in some little. <laughs> there's a one that you don't know called White Dog. <laughs> that is White Dog. That's fucking like. It's about a like, racist. It's about a racist. No, it's about a racist dog. Oh, see, that's that's amazing. It's um, about a dog, and it's America's it's, dog. Yeah, White it's, Dog. It's a dog that was trained to attack and kill black people. It's a it's a weird See, a, like, incredible film. That's fucking yeah, and and again, it has it just sounds like even the name has an immediacy to it yeah. where it's like, and and it could be anything. It, it doesn't have to be as crazy as what you just explained. It yeah. could just be, is it a fucking show? Is it a book? Is it what? But is it an album? Um, is it a Led Zeppelin song, but not Black Dog? And it's like White Dog. What the fuck is that? Is it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. is it is it uh, is it a documentary about Dog the Bounty Hunter? White Dog, the Dog the Bounty Hunter story. Um, yeah. It's interesting. Sam Fuller is interesting. Yeah. And 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 I I I, I think even his uh, I uh, I think he's more interesting even than the movies. Well, he's a lot like um, um he's a lot like John John Waters. We've we've talked about that. Where the director is more interesting than anything that's on the film, uh, that's on the screen, and I've grown in my appreciation of both of their their films, but I would still rather watch John Waters in interviews than the films, and Fuller 
Fuller is a close second in that respect. It's the personality. Yeah. There's uh, a grandness to it. There's a there's a it's it's bigger than life. It's it's really they're creating their own mythology and I love every second of it. The man the madman with the typewriter. That's what we called it. Right. From there we did Tarkovsky's Stalker. Um, one of the best films that I've ever seen. I, I love that film. It's a crazy masterpiece. It's a crazy um, weird masterpiece that I shouldn't like. By all, I acknowledge that by all, by everything that I have talked about on this podcast and in conversation with you and other friends, Tarkovsky should not be somebody that resonates with me, but God, that's a beautiful film. Yeah, it was episode 303. Mm-hmm. Watch the film, listen to the episode. We closed out the year and we'll close out this episode um mm-hmm. with uh with an old favorite an old friend with an old favorite that kind of speaks to the tone now the tone then and all the fucking tones where it's kind of like who the fuck do you trust can you trust your eyes no you can't um person across the fucking aisle, political aisle, or the person across the hall, or the person in the mirror might be trying to fuck you up. You don't know. You, you, you don't trust. You just don't fucking know. The thing, Howard Hawks is the thing from another world, and John Carpenter is the thing. Um, yeah. Amazing film. Amazing film. It I, was, I it was perfect. Back, yeah. Go ahead. I, I I was just saying that I grow in my appreciation of it every every time I watch it. I've seen it dozens of times. I've taken you to see it. I've taken other friends to see it. No, you you saw it before me. I'm not going to take credit. I'm not saying that. But one of the things was was you baptized me. <laughs> Thank you. Man. Oh, fuck you. You've, you you've seen a lot of good movies because of me, motherfucker. Don't fucking, don't play that fucking game with me. <laughs> you've seen a lot of shit you wouldn't have seen. <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen it all because of you. Yeah, because of me. Because it wasn't of for you, I wouldn't even have this platform. That's right, you wouldn't. You fuck made you. me who I am today. <laughs> I want to fucking. Looking back on these 500 episodes, I'm like, God damn, Rick, I owe you so much. <laughs> And fuck you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not spending the rest of this uh, winter strapped to this fucking sofa, okay? So, um, but yeah, there's... I this, will be, this, you know, because of you, <laughs> you. You just, you know what? I just love, I love those type of claustrophobic, paranoid films. At some point, it's weird. The thing keeps pop. We've done a few episodes on the thing. We've talked about Carpenter. We've talked about the movie. We did a comparison between Alien and the, and the thing recently. We just did that, yeah, this year. Yeah, the beginning did. of this year. Yeah, I mean, it's a film that constantly, ev- and that's the beauty of it. It is like an onion. There's a lot of different layers to the, to the film. And um, believe me, in the back of my mind, I'm working on a way to revisit this movie. I want to go back to it. I want to study it again. I love watching it. That That's how much I love watching it. That's how much I love talking about it, different aspects, the performances, um, the dynamic between people and how they rationalize both behavior and fears. I just, I, I think, I probably, I think it's probably the, the best thing that Carpenter ever done, ever, ever did. Um, and, um, it's, it's a great performance by everybody. I don't, I don't think there's a false note in any of the actors. I think they all just deliver and it's so watching them get cut down slowly. I, shit, that movie has been with me my entire life. I remember seeing it on HBO and now I've seen it in theaters a number of times. It's, um. You know, they played it out here, and I was getting ready to take my nephew to see it. I might have said this on the podcast. We went, and uh, we were watching it. We watched the first seven minutes of it, and I said, there's something wrong here. And I was like, these cocksuckers are presenting it in the wrong aspect ratio. You're going to, and it's a, it's a very, 
it's a film that you can't do that with because if anybody knew how to frame shit in a way as to give the audience an idea of what was happening while at the same time keeping the characters in the film in the dark about certain things, it's John Carpenter. Watch the film again. He puts a lot of shit in the corners of um, yeah. of the screen. And you lose that if you don't watch the film in the right aspect ratio. And did you finish the film or you guys left? No, we left. We left. I pulled it off the shelf and we watched it at home. Because I wanted to see the thing. At that point, I wanted to see the thing. Yeah, so you're like, we're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel for my nephew because he doesn't understand. As he got older, he started to understand. Because I'm telling him, this is what you're looking for when you're watching a movie. These are the kind of things that are going to, you know, film is accidental, but it's also mostly on purpose. So if it's on that screen, it was meant to be on that screen. You know, the magic of movies. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. what a way to, what a way to fucking end. Um, the, the 2020 was a fucking crazy year. Um, a year of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. all around um and we ended it with the thing um buymeacoffee.com slash watch rick ramos this one we're going to send out to cornelius Bur cornelius burrows thank you mr burrows consistent month in month out um Thank you for all you do. Thank you to all of our listeners. Um, we're going to close it out tonight and we're going to move on and we're going to keep this fucking thing rolling. Retrospective of 500 episodes over the course of 10 years. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for the contributions. And Mr. Burroughs, thank you.